the name Hagen represents my family. That's a family name from my mum's side. My mum has been a big supporter in terms of, you know, allowing me to express myself through music. Growing up in London was it was quite interesting um, because, of course, when you were at home, you had that Ghanaian culture. And then when you go to school, that whole London culture, you know, that whole British culture. All my homework on this music scene was done listening to radio. When I found out about Rinse FM, that was at the age of like around 16, 17, 18. I mean, that's the period when like UK Funky started like blowing up. And then I realized that this sound, this like UK Funky sound is so similar to what I used to hear in like high life and like all them Ghanaian rhythms and like all the drums, like the drum patterns were very, very similar. Even though my uncle has been playing music in the house, high life music, hip life music in the house, I felt like it was quite important to understand where this has all come from. I, I expect that when we go, I'm able to find out how producers are trying to fuse African music and electronic music. I wanted to find out the steps that these producers have taken to get from where they were to where they are now and still keep still keep their ties to you know where they're, they're originally from. I want to hear from them, I want to hear their stories. Because that was some of the um, ad libs that you've got. Yeah. I need to get So we just do this sample. It's me trying to sing like by the phone singers. Oh, okay. And it was awful. So why you, you've got your own style though. Yeah, man. and I had to reverse. So this is like very grime influence. Here it is. Oh my gosh. That cheeky. <laughs> It started with my dad. My dad always used to tell me, boy, have percussions in your sound. You know, when I started making beats, I didn't even want to add hi hat. I was like, it's too crisp, I don't like it. And he's the one who always told me, do this, do this, do that. So it's like I always have it in my subconscious, like, hey, you need to have African elements in your song, have African elements in your song. And I was doing hip hop. But it changed for me when the Afro trap scene came along. Mm -hmm. And I realized, wow, it's possible. Like, people can listen to the, let's say, Western music fused with the African sounds. Mm -hmm. and I was like, okay, let me try. But I had already done something like that, but it wasn't conscious with Popo Body. It was heavy, pan logo, grime type of beats. And the song was big, and I didn't know what I did back then. But later, like fast forward this year, I met Benjamin, and Benjamin was the one who added the four to the fire. Like, Afashi, you have all these elements in your system, like, bring them out, add them into your music. Recently, did I actually like pay attention to how 
like the music I was listening to as a kid and like where I'm from influenced my music because I thought it was just, uh, I was just making stuff that I, that I liked making. But then I paid a little bit attention and also from feedback from other producers and people who say you have this African thing in it, but I never, I never thought of it, you know? And then I noticed that like even the way, the way, the rhythm of my melodies sometimes, just specific rhythms, things that I do, makes it stand out as, oh, this person has African influence, you know? So it's not a very, it's not a conscious thing. I don't say I'm gonna infuse African in this, it just comes out. It's luckily for me too is, in Labadi, we have a lot of cultural groups in like the ghettos, like everywhere. We have different, I mean, my dad used to manage one, so I always go with them and see what they are playing out there. And I know how, how they go about their stuff. And I didn't record like live elements into my stuff yet, but just seeing these people is like, you always have, you know, when you go to France, they have their cousin. In Africa, it's dancing. In Ghana, especially, it's dancing. So the dance thing is what drives me to add these elements into my music. I never thought about why London is so attracted to that dark sound so much. I haven't thought about it to a deep level. However, I know the reason why I like it is because that dark sound, if that's how you could phrase it, it just moves someone automatically, especially when you're making music at a BPM, which is around 126 to 130 and above it creates facial expressions that allows people to move it's almost like a clash when you hear that yeah and then you hit you see the 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 lights mm -hmm. and then you see how dark it is all of that together that package is what i love like you just see people in some dark room skanking to like that african inspired music but it's dark as well like and then you just think that this is in London, somewhere in London, like it just excites me. Sometimes when I'm up here in the studio, I try and create a dance with all the popular dance when I'm making the beats, you know, so... It, like, it's also helped in, in selecting the right sounds. Like I know maybe when I start, it'd be like... It's gonna move with the people in Ghana because that's what... That's the element that really drives their sound. They want to hear the 4-4 four, four claps. When I, was in, when I was in the US, well, before I left for, for the US, I don't think the whole Afro beats scene was that big, you know? So I discovered the Afro beats scene when I was in the US, and I was very critical of it because I was, look, I was looking more at the vocal content and thinking, this is all trash because you're just speaking about the same things, you know. And then I came back and I went to a party, first party, and they played, were playing like Wizkid and things like that. And then it hit me. It's not, it's not about, nobody cares that much about the vocals and just the energy at that party, the people dancing and stuff, it was amazing and blew my mind. I was like, I love this. So from then on, I fell in love with, you know, Afro beats. So it wasn't about the music, it was the dancing. So I think, yeah, like, it's a, it's a huge part of it. Like, that's why most times songs come with their own dances. You have the Shucky, you have, you know, Azonto and things like that. I like listening to good tunes. Okay, if I'm listening to a song, I just don't want to listen to a song. I want to listen to a song that will give me a kind of information, a song that will at least raise my spirit when I'm down. You understand? And when I'm listening to songs recorded in Ghana, there are a lot of songs that I get encouraged when I'm discouraged. You understand? But I've been listening to a lot of Nigerian songs. Most of the songs I listen, um, she, she's a queen, she has a lot of money. Even though there are a lot of songs like that in Ghana, but the songs that really give me stories about life, that advise me about the way to live my life and all that, 
are most from this country, like from Ghana. I don't get that much from Nigeria. So not about dancing with a rhythm or a tune, but the lyrics, okay, makes me feel like Ghana is doing very well in music. something we call the gospel here, the gospel music. And gospel music, when it has things that kind of align with the things they believe in in the music, it's going to be a hit. And with the motivational song, that's not, that doesn't necessarily have to be a gospel sound. And when it comes to the dance, the dance, you have to really be in their tempo. With the lower class people, normally is is from the um, Accra Central, Teshin, Nungwa to Madina, Teshi, Aglabadi, Osu, and um, Gamashi. When the songs are coming from there, and the song is very like tailored for the lower class, it's either going to stay there or it's going to come to the mainstream and after a while it fizzles out. But when the song is made with the lower class and upper class in mind, the song is like a mainstream hit, like it can go on for six months and this song will be like the biggest song in town. place the lower class people are in the majority you see they are there are more local lower class people than higher class people and most of the songs in Ghana are also played on the radio you see on the radio a lot of people have radios at, at in their houses and what have you you see so they they, they they like to listen to radio a lot you see so the stations that play songs by younger people usually have wider listenership. The people who listen to those, you see, and that makes their songs popular. They, 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 will, they will relate with the song. Because they know what you know, and an example is about that way. You know, and when we say go ga ga go go, normally people when they are in a procession and they are making like sound like jama, they go go. Gaga, and this thing, anyone does it like anyone does it like the gun, the account people, everyone. So when you have these things in your song, it's easy for them to identify, you know. So this is how like the lower class people, they like they, they, they drive big big songs that will make it up, like into the mainstreams. They feel represented, and they, the numbers like 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 the numbers like the, they are that most people in the society. music from religion you see because uh, when you especially traditional religion see some traditional songs have their own rhythms mm -hmm. you see like uh, in Africa sometimes they say there is a fetish mm -hmm. you see now when you listen to the the music which is played at the, the shrines the traditional religious places you 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 get a lot of inspiration from the rhythms, you see. So sometimes we go and listen to the to the rhythms, learn all the patterns of of the music, bring it to the studio, and then we try to, you see. So uh, the rhythms have names. All the traditional rhythms in in Ghana, for that matter, Africa, they have names. For example, the the Ga people have a a festival they call Homo. 
they just finished celebrating there. It's a it's a religious ceremony. You see, uh, certain days of the month, the the chief would go to maybe the river. Right? They go and pour libation, yeah? and there are traditional songs that they sing along. You know, while they are going to the riverside, maybe to pour the libation or that. That is traditional. The rhythm has remained the same over the years. So the up and coming young children, when they participate, they also learn the rhythms. You see, and they try to once they get the basic elements of the music, then they try to add, you know, improvise, make it more modern, make it, you know, more uh, pleasant to the ear. I wouldn't say there are any spiritual elements in my music, but I would say that I try to achieve a certain mood. No, I don't know whether you want to call that spiritual or not. But I try to imagine that if someone was listening to my music, it would get them into a, a particular mood. Church has played a very important role for me from the ages of 16 to 18 when it comes to music as well. I've met so many great musicians there and it allowed me to understand like church music, if that that's correct like the process for you know how you how you have your praise then you also have your worship for me when i was young praise was my favorite because praise is where you get um you get your really fast or it's not really fast but you get your upbeat tracks like you'll get like your you are your most high jehovah all of that and then um we'll be mixing it into like tunes that are you know of that same tempo um and at church i was playing like percussive instruments and i think the integration of live instruments is the only way i can achieve doing something better than my previous project gold coast and not only that but the integration of live instruments makes it sound fresh imagine playing some a club tune with live instruments, live African drums, and the tune still pops. These native instruments, they're, they're, at free, they're at so many different frequencies. And there's all of these little things that adds to the groove that you can't really get with like a bongo that's been computerized or something like that. Can't really. Okay. <laughs> You don't want to fear, 
The advice I would give to any kid starting out in music business or any music entity is like they need to educate themselves. It's the first thing, like working on your talent and finding information that help you go to where you want to go. Because without it, you'll be making like decisions that won't benefit you. And some may benefit you out of luck, but with the right education, nothing can go wrong. Even when something is about to go wrong, you can spot it and maybe give it a leash. When it doesn't work out, you know when to back off. I have actually a lot of advice for you know young producers. But the few I'm gonna share is the the period when you're unknown, when no one knows you, is probably the sweetest spot for an art for any artist because you don't have any pressure from anyone. No one is expecting you to sound, you know, in a certain way, and that's your developmental stage. And I feel like a lot of producers are in a hurry. A lot of artists are in a hurry to get known without doing the going through the whole process of becoming an artist and that's the trap like because after you're then you're trapped in that little box when you have the first hit now what so it's a lot of it's a developmental stage that shouldn't be skipped and just try to be as you know as honest as possible in your music it's not about what's trending or whatever just do it even if it doesn't sound like the next person and it doesn't move people like the next person's music. If that's what you enjoy doing, then just go for it. Ah, uh, you see, the new generation of music, I've been telling my friends, and uh, 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 tends to be uh, computerized. You know, it doesn't have a lot of a human feel in it, you see. So even if we, we do compositions digitally, we try to add some live instruments, you know, like guitar and some, you know, percussion instruments, you know, to make the music more lively. In Ghana here, I think playing African instruments in Ghana here is not easy because they they pay more attention on Western staffs. Most of Ghanaians they don't pay attention to traditional staffs like what we do. You see, so more oftenly, unless you travel with what you do, like this drumming staff, you, they they hear ah this guy have been to Germany or this guy have been to US with this staff before they will begin to respect you. Now, the young people who come to the studio are always looking for rhythm. See, when they come, the main thing is that some of them even come with their own beat already recorded on the computer. So they bring it here, and then uh, we try also to add other elements, African instruments, you see. Now, play, play, play the first one, but play like... And then I'm gonna add a delay. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And then we also want more vocal, some more vocal ad libs. More, more vocal ad libs. So it's stuff like, hey, ah, something like, okay. yeah. Right. But you can do that after you do the shake up. Okay. That's a new one. Hey, Polly, Yeah, Wait. Oh, 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 oh. 
someone with that skill level who can bring me the dynamics that I wanted, um, the skill that I wanted in terms of the roles, the improvisation, everything was just off the top of your head and you could actually feel the music. That's something that I wanted, you know, that I could actually incorporate into my tracks. The live sound of percussion from Africa, from Ghana, at a good skill level and you were able to deliver. So it was amazing. I loved it. other producers was very educational for me because I got to I got to understand certain things about them that I, w- I would not necessarily understand by just listening to them on SoundCloud so when I was with Kufachi and Radical one thing that was highlighted was the fact that um, the way we make music is not it, it may sound complicated but when you look at the session it wasn't that complicated so it was just fascinating to see that certain things that are not actually as hard as you think they are so yeah it was it was good to just meet and talk about our different um, working processes in terms of like achieving our end track and um, how how different we are as well you may think that someone has put in so much effort in you know producing a particular groove and then when you talk it through it's like oh this is just a loop. It, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She say she don't love me, she don't want me. Now she say she wanna come back. I no go try. Me I no go try that. Me I no go try. Me I no go try. Now I get the money, she dey go call me. She say she really wanna come back. I no go try. I no go try that. Me I no go try. Me I no go try that. I just stay high. Me and my baby, Joanna. Hmm, Joanna. Hmm. I base one side, me and my baby, Joanna. Na, na, na. Uh, Joanna. I remember the time she would be call my phone, call my phone. See, I base from my house in a day all alone, a day all alone. I did think for, mm-hmm. baby, you did think for. She want to link man But I no go link am nah, nah. She de tweet man hey. I no go retweet am She de see man For Instagram Now I get the money at the ball I know they go count am a do a de She say she don't love me She don't want me Now she say she wanna come back I no go try I no go try that